the law of one unabridged transcription of contact between the L and L group in registered trademark and the social memory complex known as RAW. Session 50. I am RAW. I greet you in the love and in the light of the one infinite creator. We communicate now. Questioner. Could you please give me an indication of the instrument's condition now? I am raw. It is as previously stated. Questioner, in the last session, you made the statement that experiences are attracted to the entity through the South Pole. Could you expand on that and give us a definition of what you mean? I am raw. It takes some consideration to accomplish the proper perspective for grasping the sense of the above information. The South or negative pole is one which attracts. It pulls onto itself those things magnetized to it. So with the mind-body-spirit complex, the inflow of experiences of the South Pole in flux. You may consider this a simplistic statement. The only specific part of this correct correctness is that the red ray or foundation energy center, being the lowest or root energy center of the physical vehicle, will have the first opportunity to react to any experience. In this way only, you may see a physical locus of the South Pole being identified with a root energy center. In every facet of mind and body the root or foundation will be given the opportunity to function first. What is this opportunity but survival? This is the root possibility of response and may be found to be characteristic of the basic functions of both mind and body. You will find this instinct the strongest, and once this is balanced much is open to the seeker. The South Pole then ceases blocking the experiential data and higher energy centers of mind and body become availed of the opportunity to use the experience drawn to it. Questioner, why do you say the experience is drawn to or attracted to the entity? I am raw. We say this due to our understanding that this is the nature of the phenomenon of experiential catalyst and its entry into the mind-body-spirit complex is awareness. Questioner, could you give an example of how an entity sets up a condition for attracting a particular experiential catalyst and how that catalyst then is provided or is learned? I am raw. Such an example may be given. Questioner, will you give that? I am raw. We pause to scan this instrument's consciousness for permission to use its experiential catalyst as example. We may proceed. This is one instance and extrapolation may be made to other entities which are aware of the process of evolution. This entity chose, before incarnation, the means whereby catalyst had great probability of being obtained. This entity desired the process of expressing love and light without expecting any return. This instrument programmed also to endeavor to accomplish spiritual work and to comfort itself with companionship in the doing of this work. Agreements were made prior to incarnation. The first, with the so-called parents and siblings of this entity. This provided the experiential catalyst for the situation of offering radiance of being without expectation of return. The second program involved agreements with several entities. These agreements provided and will provide, in your time-space and space-time continuum, opportunities for the experiential catalyst of work and comradeship. There are events which were part of a program for this entity only in that they were possibility probability vortices having to do with your societal culture. These events include the nature of the living or standard of living, the type of relationships entered into in your legal framework, and the social climate during the incarnation. The incarnation was understood to be one which would take place at harvest. These givens, shall we say, apply to millions of your peoples, those aware of evolution and desirous in the very extreme of attaining the heart of love and the radiance which gives understanding. No matter what the lessons programmed, they have to do with other selves, not with events. They have to do with giving, not receiving. For the lessons of love are of this nature both for positive and negative. Those negatively harvestable will be found at this time endeavoring to share their love of self. There are those whose lessons are more random due to their present inability to comprehend the nature and mechanism of the evolution of mind, body, and spirit. Of these we may say that the process is guarded by those who never cease their watchful expectation of being of service. There is no entity without help either through self-awareness of the unity of creation or through guardians of the self which protect the less sophisticated mind-body-spirit from any permanent separation from unity while the lessons of your density continue. Questioner. Could you give an example of negative polarization sharing love of self? It would seem to me that that would deplete negative polarization. Could you expand on that concept? I am raw. We may not use examples of known beings due to the infringement this would cause. Thus we must be general. The negatively oriented being will be one who feels that it has found power that gives meaning to its existence precisely as the positive polarization does feel. This negative entity will strive to offer these understandings to other selves, most usually by the process of forming the elite, the disciples, 
and teaching the need and rightness of the enslavement of other selves for their own good. These other selves are conceived to be dependent upon the self and in need of the guidance and the wisdom of the self. Questioner, thank you. Can you expand on the concept which is this, that it is necessary for an entity to, during incarnation in the physical as we call it, become polarized or interact properly with other entities and why this isn't possible in between incarnations when he is aware of what he wants to do, but why must he come into an incarnation and lose memory, conscious memory of what he wants to do and then act in a way that he hopes to act? Could you expand on that please? I am raw. Let us give the example of the man who sees all the poker hands. He then knows the game. It is but child's play to gamble for it is no risk. The other hands are known. The possibilities are known and the hand will be played correctly but with no interest. In time space and in the true color green density, the hands of all are open to the eye. The thoughts, the feelings, the troubles, all these may be seen. There is no deception and no desire for deception. Thus much may be accomplished in harmony but the mind-body-spirit gains little polarity from this interaction. Let us re-examine this metaphor and multiply it into the longest poker game you can imagine, a lifetime. The cards are love, dislike, limitation, unhappiness, pleasure, etc. They are dealt and re-dealt and re-dealt continuously. You may. During this incarnation begin and we stress begin to know your own cards. You may begin to find the love within you. You may begin to balance your pleasure, your limitations, etc. However, your only indication of other selves cards is to look into the eyes. You cannot remember your hand, their hands, perhaps even the rules of this game. This game can only be won by those who lose their cards in the melting influence of love. Can only be won by those who lay their pleasures, their limitations. They're all upon the table face up and say inwardly, all, all of you players, each other self, whatever your hand, I love you. This is the game, to know, to accept, to forgive, to balance, and to open the self in love. This cannot be done without the forgetting, for it would carry no weight in the life of a mind-body-spirit being this totality. Questioner, thank you. How does the ability to hold visual images in mind allow the adept to do polarization in consciousness without external action? I am raw. This is not a simple query, for the adept is one which will go beyond the green ray which signals entry into harvestability. The adept will not simply be tapping into intelligent energy as a means of readiness for harvest but tapping into both intelligent energy and intelligent infinity for the purpose of transmuting planetary harvestability and consciousness. The means of this working lie within. The key is first, silence, and secondly, singleness of thought. Thusly a visualization which can be held steady to the inward eye for several of your minutes, as you measure time, will signal the adept's increase in singleness of thought. This singleness of thought then can be used by the positive adept to work in group ritual visualizations for the raising of positive energy, by negative adepts for the increase in personal power. Questioner, can you tell me how the adept, then, after being able to hold the image for several minutes, what he does then to affect planetary consciousness or increase positive polarity. I still don't quite understand about this. I am raw. When the positive adept touches intelligent infinity from within, this is the most powerful of connections for it is the connection of the whole mind-body-spirit complex microcosm with the macrocosm. This connection enables the, shall we say, green ray true color and time space to manifest in your time space in green ray thoughts are beings in your illusion this is normally not so the adepts then become living channels for love and light and are able to channel this radiance directly into the planetary web of energy nexi the ritual will always end by the grounding of this energy in praise and thanksgiving and the release of this energy into the planetary whole questioner i know of people who have been recently trained in meditation who after a very short period of intense meditation, a couple of days or so, are able to cause the action at a distance effect on metal, bending it. It's my understanding that they are wearing a pyramid-shaped wire on their heads while doing this. I was invited to one of the meditation sessions a couple of years ago but I couldn't get there. Could you comment on this process? and if they are accomplishing anything of value or not. I am raw. No. Please ask one more full query at this working. Questioner, could you give me more information on the energy fields of the body as relates to the right and left brain and if this is somehow related to the pyramid shape as far as energy focusing goes? I'm a little lost at exactly how to get into this line of questioning, 
so I will ask that question. I am raw. We are similarly at a loss at this line of answering. We may say that the pyramid shape is but one which focuses the instreamings of energy for use by entities which may become aware of these instreamings. We may say further that the shape of your physical brain is not significant as a shape for concentrating in streamings of energy. Please ask more specifically if you may that information you seek. Questioner, each of us feel, in meditation, energy on the head in various places. Could you tell me what this is, and what it signifies, and what the various places that we feel it signify? I am raw. Forgetting the pyramid will be of aid to you in the study of these experiences. The instreamings of energy are felt by the energy centers which need, and are prepared for activation. Thus those who feel the stimulation at violet ray level are getting just that. Those feeling it within the forehead between the brows are experiencing indigo ray and so forth. Those experiencing tinglings and visual images are having some blockage in the energy center being activated and thus the electrical body spreads this energy out and its effect is diffused. Those not truly sincerely requesting this energy may yet feel it if the entities are not well trained in psychic defense. Those not desirous of experiencing these sensations and activations and changes even upon the subconscious level will not experience anything due to their abilities of defense and armoring against change. Questioner, right now I'm getting two feelings simultaneously. Is this normal to get two at once? I am raw. The most normal for the adept is the following, the indigo stimulation activating that great gateway into healing, magical work, prayerful attention, and the radiance of being and the stimulation of the violet ray which is the spiritual giving and taking from and to creator, from creator to creator. This is a desirable configuration. Is there a brief query before we leave this instrument? Questioner, is there anything that we can do to make the instrument more comfortable or improve the contact? I am raw. You are conscientious and your alignments are careful. It would be well to take care that this instrument's neck is placed carefully upon its support. I am raw. I leave you, my friends in the love and the light of the one infinite creator. Go forth, then, rejoicing in the power and in the peace of the one infinite creator. Adonai. And Obsession 50.